Alongside, this is Mike Ingram, and I just happened to catch him uh, coming back from some sections of the Baja Divide on his pivot. Mike, tell us about how it went and some of your equipment choices. Well, I had a pretty good time. It, uh, I rode from uh, LA down to San Diego and then uh, down to the border and crossed over to Tijuana, went down, and took a train, took a bus that is down to Vicente Guerrero. Yep. And then rode from there down to uh, Vizcano. And um, then from there, hopped on down to do the Cape Loop. So, ride went really well, it took me about a month. Yeah, a few days short of a month. But what I've got is a Pivot Less 29. I got this ride to back about four years ago to do Tour de Vine. Yeah, Tour and, de Vine uh, ring, yeah. You know, I didn't know what kind of a bike to get, so basically Mike Hall had a tour, had a, hit a Less 29. Yeah. <laughs> and believe it or not, that's why I went and bought it. <laughs> so, well, Mike so Hall it, is a good one to follow. Yeah, it was a good sure. one to follow, you know. Yep. It's a beautiful bike, and so I scored that, and I've had it since. So it's, you know, it's been to Canada a couple of times. Now it's been to uh, Cabo San Lucas, so. Yeah. But uh, Revolent bags, and uh, we got a stuff sack here that's worked really well when, uh, during rain, rain events. Yeah. This trip I didn't have any. Uh, well, that's nice. I've got, uh, actually got a hip here. Uh, this is called a Fred bar, which is like oh, buried yeah. underneath all that stuff. That's why the arrow bar is hanging off of. And uh, what else we got? Revelant bag back here, the spot tracker, a little baggie for the spot so it yep. doesn't fall off. And for this trip, I carried a camel bag. I went and scored this bigger camel bag. Yeah. And uh, try not to carry much weight in it, you know, to save the bag. Right. But, uh, but you got like was, three liters worth I've got in there? A three liter bag in there. Yeah. That I keep empty. Nice. Except for the long stretch. You know, okay. Like Nick Carmen mentioned that there were a couple of things. From Catavina down to uh, Santa Rosalita, and he mentions that's like 120 miles, and you need uh, I don't know eight to 12 liters of water or something that effect, you know. Yeah. So I put uh, you know two liter bottles up here on the front. Yep. One liter bottles in here, and three liters back up here, and then I shoved uh, like a 600 milliliter Coke in here. Okay. Another Coke in here, and another Coke over on the other side, you know. And, Wow. So he got a little bit, 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 added all up, and I think I got to 11 liters. Yeah, I was going to say, what is that, between 10 and 12 liters something somewhere? Like yeah, Something like that, you know. That's a lot of capacity. That's it was, good. It was heavy. Yeah, I bet. The stuff was really heavy. Fortunately, the section coming out of Catavina, once you got onto the dirt, it had a good little bit of downhill for the first day. So it's yeah. nice to sort of drink <laughs> some of that water down, use some of it for cooking. Not have you know, to haul it back uphill, huh? And not have to haul it back uphill. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. And I carried a little, I uh, got a little tiny propane stove. Uh, I forgot who makes it. Jet boil. Oh, got a jet, jet boil. boil yeah, yeah, that thing works great. Nice. You know, really lightweight. I mean, lots of times we cooked it. We, almost every night, we would build a fire. Yeah, okay. You know, but first thing in the morning... You know, I pull out one of my Starbucks Vias uh -huh. and boil up a cup of coffee, and you know, it's good to go. And that jet boils fast, like two minutes yeah, it's or really less. Fast, yeah, really fast. And a little Mexican pastry, you know, that I had nice. with me. Uh, you know, we're ready to rock and roll. Yeah, you know, that sounds go, like a good way to start the day. Go do some right. Yeah. Well, what kind uh, of gearing are you running here, Mike? Uh, it's uh, one by eleven. Yep. Let's see, I think I got a thirty. What do I have? I got a thirty in the front, and I got a forty-two as my big. And, yep. I think that's a 10 for the smallest. Yeah, the little guy 10 to 42 yeah. cassette. Yeah, that sounds right. With yeah, the 30. SRAM. It's on SRAM gears. And, yep. uh, yeah, that sounds like what I would have These things up here, the cages are the, uh, what is it? It's like a king cage, I think. Yeah, king cage, yeah. And I've got them held on with just basically automotive hose clamps. Yep. And gorilla tape wrapped around the shock. Right, yeah, it's protected. And, yeah. You know, that stuff wasn't going anyplace. Yep. And then use these uh, volley straps, you know, to tie it all down and keep things from rattling. Yeah. Yeah, I use a system like that, too. Uh, there's a company called uh, Widefoot Designs that makes, uh, they call it the leader cage, but it's very similar to those king cages, too. Yeah. So the only thing that fell off was my light. It had a lysine light sitting up here. Oh, yeah. And so I'm going down Highway 1, and I hit a bump, you know, and I hear something go kind of bang, 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 and I thought it was a rock. Yeah. 
So I get about two miles further down, go down this hill, and I kind of climb up on some dirt, you know, and I'm sitting there, and I'm look, I stop to take a picture. It's a really cool spot to take a picture. I look around, yeah. I kind of look, and I go, my light's gone. Oh, and no. I, knew, I knew where it was. It's in here in the back now. So yeah. I back down the hill, back up Highway 1, you know, walked up the, a, a little ways, and then came back down, and there it is. It's on the side of the road. No trucks have ran over it. So, so you got an extra two, uh, four or five miles in there, some, something yeah, like got, that? Got yeah, got a couple extra miles. <laughs> yeah. you know, got some bonus miles. Nice. You know, bonus miles. Nice. Well, it's a great looking rig for the for basically any bike packing trip, I think, but especially for the Baja Divide with the, the 27.5 plus tires and, and uh, the gearing you chose and all all yeah. your gear, all the all the water capacity too, and basically happy with it. The only thing I think I took that I would have left at home, I got a pair of rain pants back here that I never used. Oh you know? yeah. And I used my rain jacket, actually the night I left Tucson, you know, in the middle of the Arizona in the desert while it was raining, going down to the train station that night. Yeah. And I had the rain jacket on during New Year's Day. I left the hotel and went out, and looked at the road and decided the road is muddy. Yep. And we're not going to do mud again because I experienced that last year. Okay. And uh, so, no, we don't want to do mud. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I made a U-turn, came back to the hotel, and waited till the next day, and then went out. You know, nice. That was a wise decision. So. Yeah, yeah. We'll run into that death mud, man. That's the worst. You just can't go. Yeah, I know. It's just not going to happen. You know, you just. Yep. Forget this bravery stuff. You know? <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Well, that sounds like a good decision. But uh, yeah, so I'm happy with it. You know, happy with the ride. Yeah. We're good to go. It's really fun. Yeah. Roll down into Cabo San Lucas, roll out there to the pier, you know, and that's as far as you can go. You can't go any further, you know. Nice. Well, congratulations, well, Mike. It sounds like a fun trip, and uh, thanks for taking the time to let me ask you some questions. Yeah. Re really appreciate it. Good running it. into you. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> All right. Thanks again, Mike okay. Ingram.